Yeah, I know the title of this video is a little bit crazy. Can a technology that's older than LeBron James's career actually end up extending his career now, even given all the newer sneaker technology, especially made by Nike that's come out in the last 20 some years? But there is something to the technology behind Foam Posit that really could do some wonders for LeBron James and a lot of other people with his sort of foot conditions. Let's get into it. And I will argue this point to the very bitter end that Foam Posit is one of the greatest, if not the greatest sneaker technology to ever come out. I just think it came out at a time where its technology just was maybe a little bit too advanced for its time and people weren't able to use it to its full potential. Now the actual material behind Foam Posit isn't anything revolutionary, it's nothing crazy, it's just liquid polyurethane, but it's the way they mold it and the characteristics it takes on once it's molded that makes it so great great and why it can really help someone like LeBron James. Because when you look at a foam posit shoe, the first thing that catches your eye is like the shipping container looking outer shell, right? Or what Nike designed to look like the exoskeleton of a beetle for its aerodynamics and strength. But what you're actually looking at when you're looking at this outer shell is the mold of the foam posit. That outer shell is what is used to make the shape of the liquid polyurethane underneath of it. And so when they heat mold this polyurethane to this shell, you can pretty much make it in any shape you want because it's heated to such a degree, about 130 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you look at it under the microscope, it looks very similar to another material I look at under the microscope all the time. And that's the Nike Phylon I see in a lot of Nike shoes. And that's because a lot of the properties are very similar, that porous, foam substance. And one of the great things about foam posit is number one, it is super strong because it's basically like having a midsole wrap all the way up around your foot. But number two, like a midsole that starts to bottom out after use, which is a bad thing, right? You know, that's what makes you have to throw away a shoe a lot of the time. In the uppers of a shoe, that's what allows the shoe to start molding around your foot. And that's why they say foam posit gets more comfortable the more times you use it, because it does start to mold around your foot. And all those molding capabilities and characteristics of liquid polyurethane is the first reason why foam posit could be such a game changer for LeBron this late in his career. Remember, he has been going through bouts of chronic foot soreness and other issues like that. Now, I know right now it is kind of treated and it is quieted down for a while, but if you're playing professional basketball, usually those chronic kind of snake bites or those teething issues in your foot do start to come back because you're doing the same things that cause the soreness in the first place. And so as with most NBA players, remember they're wearing a custom molded insert in their shoe, which allows to contour the entire surface of the bottom of their foot. However, in LeBron's case, because he does have a little bit of bunion, Taylor's bunion, he does have a little bit of windswept deformity in his toes, the uppers of the shoe honestly are just as important as the midsole and outsole of the shoe. Now, in a lot of LeBron shoes, yes, they are being made with a custom last, but when you're getting custom lasted shoes made with synthetic materials like what's in the Nike LeBron 19 or the LeBron 20 or the 18, 17, whatever, usually that's just a general shape of your foot, general width of your foot, and mostly it has to do with the midsole and outsole of the shoe, kind of the shape that your foot is standing on. Whereas in the uppers of the shoe, it's still relatively the same shape. A lot more forgiving for sure, but it's not that custom fit. Whereas with a foam posit shoe, they could literally make a last of LeBron's foot, especially the dorsal side of his foot and the junctions of his foot where all the lumps and bumps are, and literally make a shoe that is contoured to him all the way around it. Now, yeah, foam posit is a super heavy product. Remember, the midsole has to be five times stronger to handle a foam posit upper than a regular shoe, but that's outdated data. You know, from the time that Nike started with foam posit until now, you know, their technology has gotten better and better and liquid polyurethane blends have gotten lighter and lighter. So if Nike wanted to put the R&D behind making foam posit a little bit lighter, they could keep his shoes under a certain weight while still getting giving him a completely custom molded upper, it would be like a glove around his foot, wouldn't need any additional break in, just like a custom insert would be for the bottom of your foot. But I think the second reason why foam posit could extend LeBron's career is probably the more important one, and that has to do with his relative strength, number one, to blunt force trauma from your own foot moving around in the shoe, but also its strength and shielding to trauma from external forces. Because if you ever put on a foam posit shoe, you'll know someone could kick you with a steel toe, and it really wouldn't hurt that much. The, the density of the polyurethane is so crazy. Plus, that outer shell does provide a little bit of shock absorption around it, not much, but a little bit. Now that also 
traps a lot of heat for sure, but it also creates like a micro environment around the shoe. And for someone like LeBron who just spends so much time in the paint and so much time in crowds getting double teamed or just, you know, really getting beat up in the paint. So if you do have foot soreness or just kind of, you know, a little bit of bumps and bruises on your foot, if you've got this exoskeleton around you, well, then it's going to provide such better shielding than shoes with just really thin textile materials because you're number one, less likely to start over pronating and straining your posterior tibial tendon, your plantar fascia, or any of the plantar ligaments that are holding your arch up. It's basically acting like an orthotic, but for the top part of your shoe. And I know one of the biggest points I always harp on in my videos is that no mid or high top shoe is going to stop an ankle sprain. However, foam posit is the material that comes closest because it also shares load throughout the entire upper of the shoe, right? When one section of the shoe is under strain, that strain is able to be dispersed throughout the entire panel of foam posit. So that force is being dispersed through such a larger area than other shoes, just little pieces of foxing or paneling on the shoe. Whereas in foam posit, it's just one giant panel. But like I said, with that technology being so old, there were a lot of ways to bring that technology into the 2020s and beyond. I mean, even look, a few years ago, Nike put foam posit into their Vapor 9 tennis shoe. Now, yes, it is a little bit heavier than the regular for sure, but they put it on a regular Vapor midsole and outsole, which is a very light, more minimalist tennis shoe. And it's able to play just fine. It is a little bit heavier heat trapping for sure, but they still got the technology to meld with a more minimalist tennis shoe. Now, yeah, this shoe never really officially released. It just kind of got dumped onto a bunch of retail stores because like I said, it, the foam posit really isn't a great technology for tennis. It's more of a, a basketball type technology, but it just goes to show you even Nike tennis with the relatively smaller department than Nike basketball was able to make this shoe. Imagine what they could do with all the resources of Nike basketball, making a newer foam posit or just incorporating foam posit into some of their future line shoes for LeBron or even just future line shoes in basketball in general. And I know all sneaker companies are looking for ways to dump weight in their shoes to make shoes a little bit more agile, more forgiving. However, with how physical the game has become recently, you know, I think there is something to be said for shoes that are a little bit more protective, a little bit more maximalist in some ways, just because I've just seen so many external forces cause injuries to people's feet in the NBA specifically this year that have you know left them out for so long so you know like I said I, I think what's old sometimes becomes new again and I think you know foam posit definitely has a place in today's basketball technology I do think it has to be updated and I do think it has to be able to be integrated with some of the lighter materials some of the more kind of futuristic materials we're seeing in shoes nowadays but I do think if anybody can do it, it it's Nike because remember Nike swings to the fences on a lot of tech sometimes it's a hit sometimes it's a miss but usually it is Nike that's kind of pushing the envelope in terms of basketball technology. And I think Foam Posit is a perfect place to kind of jump that up a few levels to kind of bring that technology up to today's modern game. So I would love to hear your thoughts on Foam Posit, especially since Foam Posit was one of the biggest reasons I became a foot doctor. This was like the technology that I just gravitated so much toward. Especially when I was in college and kind of looking at what I wanted to do with my life. Um, this type of sneaker technology has really kind of got me into like podiatry and, and foot and ankle medicine and biomechanics. So um, I could talk about this stuff and argue the merits of foam posit all day. So I'd love to get the conversation started down in the comments. And if you want to take a deeper dive into some of the issues LeBron has had with his feet and just kind of the story behind his feet and his career and his game, I will leave that video linked up above and make sure you subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam, specifically foam posit. Had to know I was going to do that one. See you in the next one.